Hi, Huckleberry here, and welcome to part two of my TCP three-way handshake tutorial video, which is in two parts. In this video, we take a detailed look at the three-way handshake in Wireshark. I'll dissect the whole thing for you. Here you go. So here we are looking at Wireshark, and what we have here is a capture that I've done a little bit earlier, and that's a um, me downloading an FTP file. So uh, we should definitely get a three-way handshake there. But if we look, we don't see the three-way handshake yet. Now the problem is that it's it's in here, but we've captured a lot of data that's not really of interest, so we're gonna have to filter out for the for the three-way handshake. Uh, so what you can tell, if you look at the bottom here, you can see that the packets, uh, total number of packets and the total number of display packets, 100%. You see that says that it's the, um, it's 100% or that these numbers are the same. So we can tell that uh, we have not done any filtering now. So let's go ahead and apply a filter. We just say TCP. Like, see, we have this SSD and, and UP, UDP and stuff. We don't care about that. So let's just look at the TCP. All right. And now we can see we're getting somewhere. Here's our SYN, SYNAC, ACK. But let's get it, let's uh, narrow this down even further. So if we take any one of these packets, like you could take the first, second, third, it really doesn't matter. Let's just take the second, right mouse click on that, say follow, TCP stream. And you're going to get some good information here, but not for what we need right now. So we can close that out. And here we are. So here is our three-way handshake. So we have SYN, SYNAC, ACK. So that's the, uh, that's the first part of it. So we, we can actually see our SYN, SYNAC, ACK in Wireshark. Okay, so the next, what we want to look at here, so if you look at our first, uh, our first packet here, it's a little hard to tell, it's highlighted, but we're looking at packet 28 here, which is our SYN. Now we can see that the first sequence number that it's giving us is a zero. So that's our initial sequence number. So remember we said that the initial sequence number was supposed to be some kind of a randomly generated number and not zero. So why is this showing zero? The reason is because Wireshark is doing that for us. So Wireshark actually allows you to toggle between a relative sequence number. They started at zero just to make it easier for, for humans to count. That is not the real sequence number. And I can show you that's not. Watch. If I go here, and I, it, it actually shows me at the bottom. That's my actual sequence number right there, that 7199, whatever that is. So we can actually look at it either way. So let's go ahead and while we're on this topic, we're going to go and we're going to, we're going to put it back to the, um, we're going to take it away from relative sequence number and we're going to put it to, uh, to the actual sequence number. So what you can do is you go to edit, you go to preferences, and then protocols. This is a little tricky to find. And then you got to find the TCP. Uh, STC. There it is. TCP. And then uncheck relative sequence numbers. Say OK. And now look. You can see that our sequence number, that is our true initial sequence number. So if you remember, I said that there are four functions of the three-way handshake, which are, is the destination port open, the advertisement of the ephemeral port, the advertisement of the initial sequence number, and the advertisement of the window size. So uh, let's look at them uh, one by one. So uh, the first and probably the easiest to see is, uh, is the destination port open? So if we go to the first SYN packet, um, we see that we have uh, we see that we have this sin that's our packet 28 here and then this packet here has replied back with a uh, synac you see that there so therefore okay, this is a little easier to see here therefore it has answered back so they so we do know that the destination has uh, 
uh, is open or else the, we never would have gotten past that first packet. And the second part is the advertisement of the ephemeral port. So if we look at the first packet here, and here we see the advertisement of the ephemeral port. So if you look at the first packet, the ephemeral port is going to be the same as the source port, which in this case is 10386. And this is a little bit unusual, but that is your, uh, that's your destination port or your well-known uh, port. Now, if we look at the next packet, then you can see that it's uh, reversed itself. So now it's uh, talking back to that same ephemeral port that became the destination port in the second packet. And now we look at the uh, advertisement of the initial sequence number. So if you look at the first packet here, we can see that our initial sequence number is this ending in, it's this number right here, ending in 0579. And then if we look at the second packet, that's our SYNAC. Now here we can see that it has acknowledged the last sequence number. So it's added one to it. So that's 580 instead of uh, 579. And then we have its sequ initial sequence number, which is this number here, ending in 9965. So now we can go to the last packet, the, uh, the last ACK, and we can see that we have a sequence number here of the 580, which is the same as, as, the, uh, uh, as the one above. And we have the, it acknowledges the with the 9966, which is one greater than the sequence number above. And last week, we look at the advertisement of window size. So here, if we, in window size, you really don't look at the first packet. It really occurs in that second SYNAC packet. So here we have, in this second SYNAC packet, we have from the server to the client, Okay, and we can see that it's advertising a window size of 65535, meaning that the client must, um, must follow that window size. It can't send more than that amount of packets before it gets an acknowledgement. And then we go to the last ACK, and we see that's from the client to the server, um, now how did I know that? Of course, that's, a, that's the private address and the public address. So that's how I know the difference between the, uh, the server and the client. Uh, anyway, we can see that it has advertised also the same window size of 65535. And that is the end of this video. I hope that it was useful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment, and I would be happy to respond. Thank you.